Hey everyone, it's me Average. Welcome back to another video on my Nuxt full stack web development series. In this video, you're going to be covering authentication, which basically involves users logging in, registering, all that good stuff. And there's a variety of ways to do this, a variety of external services and libraries that you can utilize to get this up quickly. However, we're going to be doing it ourselves in our own database that we set up from scratch because we want to get a good idea of how it's set up, how it's done. It's pretty simple. First things first, we're going to go to our DB schema and we're going to create a new table. We are going to call it users table and obviously we call SQLite table, give it the name users and then inside of the object we're going to have a user ID with a primary key that is going to auto increment. We're going to have a user name and this is going to be a text value and it's always going to be true. Also we want a password and this is also going to be a not null text value. So this is all we really need for right now, however we need to create the migration and run it. So we're going to go here and we're going to CD into our Nuxt app. And now we are going to do the following command MPX drizzle kit generate. This will generate the migrations for us. So we can verify that this is working by going here and going to our latest migration. And as you can see, we have our users folder there. So let's just NPX drizzle kit and we can say migrate. So if everything functions as it is supposed to you should have two tables the fruits table and the users table nothing will be inside of the users table just yet now that we have this working we are going to get a api endpoint set up and the api endpoint is where we're going to be doing the user registration and the user login because we want to verify it on the server side. So inside of our API, we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call it auth because inside of here is where we're gonna handle authentication. Inside of here, we're gonna create a new register.ts file and we're gonna start it off like we always do. And we actually want to prefix this register with a .post.ts and this tells Nux that this is going to be a post endpoint that you submit a post HTTP method request to. And if you remember in one of the previous videos, a post request is where we are sending data to the server that it also happens to be sensitive information. Anyway, let's continue defining our event handler. So we just do that with define event handler and we give it a callback with a parameter called event. So in here, we can actually read the data body, which is the information that we're going to be submitting to the server as a JSON request, typically, or we could do form data or however we are retrieving it. But we are going to simply create a set of variables that we're going to be destructuring. And the first one's going to be a username. The second one is going to be a password. And to get these values, we need to await the read body and pass in the event. However, we'll get an error because we're using await here. We just need to change our callback to asynchronous. Before we proceed with anything, we want to verify that our username and our password both exist. And if they do not, simply we're going to throw an error. So we're going to say throw create error and we're going to say username and password must be provided in data body. And we want to provide a specific error code at the end here. So we can actually wrap this inside of an object and we can give our error a message and we can also give our error a status code of 400. And now what this is going to do is basically tell the browser or whoever is making this request that we are providing a 400 error, which relates to a bad request, usually meaning that the request didn't have the parameters that are required or malformed syntax. Now we can continue with our event handler, but first things first, we're actually going to install a package called bcrypt. And what is bcrypt exactly? Bcrypt will allow us to hash our passwords, meaning we aren't going to be storing our passwords in plain text. For example, inside of here, we don't want to be storing our passwords. If my password is 1234, we don't want to be seeing 1234. And now with hashing, the only way to actually determine what a password's value is 
is by comparing it against another value. So we can verify a hash against a plain text password and see if that hash matches the plain text password. However, that's the only way we can do it. There's no way to really decode it without brute forcing the password with a, with a bunch of expected passwords. So this makes things a lot more secure and honestly, it's the way that I would do it. So let's do NPMI and we're just going to do bcrypt ts and there we go we have our package now and the usage of bcrypt is pretty simple pretty self-explanatory we're going to get into it but first i do want to run an mpn run dev just so our packages are all done and we can actually import easily without any issue so there we go everything's good now what we want to do is hash our password so we can say const hashed password equals i'm going to say await and we're going to use the hash method from bcrypt ts and we're going to provide it with our content string here and let's just say password we also need to provide a salt which is how we're hashing the password and we also need to provide a salt to our method here as you can see an argument for salt was not provided and now what is a salt well we're not actually providing the salt we're providing the length of assault. And assault is a random set of characters that is added to the password. So even if two passwords are exactly identical, they will have different salt characters that are added to the bcrypt. Why is assault important? Basically, it allows hashes to be different, even if the password is the same. Why is this important? Well, let's say a hacker found the value to a hashed string and they could get it now they know that that hash is always going to have a value and that's where salts come in because they are randomly appended to a hash meaning they can have the same password two hashes can have the same password yet they can be unique hashes so this allows kind of what's called a rainbow table to not exist as much because the hashes will be non-predictable and it honestly does not really matter what you decide to do. You can put any value you really want. We can just do eight, for example, and that will be fine. Now we have our user. Let's create it and insert them into the database. So we're going to fetch our database. So we can do this by saying const db await and use drizzle. Actually, remember, we don't need to use the await here. And then we can say const insert result, and this is going to be the result of our inserting into the database. We can do db dot insert, and we can give it the table name, which in our case is going to be tables dot users table. And we need to provide it a values object, and this is going to be the set of values that we give it, which will be the username. And that corresponds with our username variable, and then our password, and this will correspond with our hashed password. And then we also want to add a dot returning at the end here. This will just allow us to get the object back. What we can do with this is just return our insert result. And we are going to want to await our insert here so we can actually get it. This will allow us to just use our insert result as if it was the object that we just returned. So we could say username if we wanted to. Now let's test this out and see if we can actually register a user. So the way that we're going to test this out actually since we're submitting a post request is using an external tool, whether that be Postman, Insomnia, or and in my case, I'm going to be using Bruno since it is an open source tool. This is what it looks like and it is an application designed specifically for testing APIs. So what we can do here is we can go to create collection and we're going to call this Nux tutorials in my case you can call it whatever you want. Give it a location to store it in. For me, I'm just going to store it in a folder that's within our Nux tutorials and I'm just going to call it Bruno and create the collection. So now we have our Nux tutorials here and I can press safe mode. I am not going to be running any JavaScript from our files from our responses so we don't need that and let's create a new request and this request is going to be http localhost 3000 slash api slash register and we're going to switch this to a post request actually i realized this should go here and we can just give the request name register so let's create that and now we have an area for us to submit a data body and we're going to go here no body and press json as we defined here our request expects a username. So let's just say average 
and it also expects a password. So we're just going to say one, two, three, four. And now when we try and make a request here, it will say page not found. And there's a very obvious reason why this is happening. It's because we didn't include an auth here. So just add API slash auth since that's where it is in the directory structure. There we go. Now when we do our request, we'll notice that we get a username, we get a password, we get an ID, and this was found from the database. It is our insert result. If we actually look in our database here and we refresh our users table, you'll notice that we have our user here with its hashed password. This is what a bcrypt hash looks like. Now, if we go to a site like this, where we can verify hashes, you'll see here bcrypt hash, we can paste in our hash and we can have the original text. Uh, let's just say ASD, for example, the hash does not match the text. If we do one, two, three, four, we'll notice that the hash matches the text. So now we know that our bcrypt is working properly and our hashes are valid. Perfect. Now, how do we know if we can actually log into our user? How do we make it so we can compare against our hashed password now? Let's make a new route called login.post.ts. This one is going to be very similar to our register. So we're actually going to copy and paste most of it into here because yes, we do still want a username and password. However, this down here is going to change a little bit. So instead of inserting a user into the database, we're actually going to be retrieving a user from the username. Let's fetch our DB first. And that is achieved by use drizzle. Now let's try and find our user. We can do this by const user equals db dot select. And we're going to be selecting the entire object. So just provide an empty object from tables dot users table. And let's start chaining nicely so that our code looks a little nicer. And let's do dot where. And this is going to be our first condition, which is very interesting in Drizzle and it works a little bit differently from how it does in MySQL, but there's a lot of similarities. So when we want to know if something is equal to another value, we can say EQ and import that from Drizzle ORM. This is a function where the left and the right hand parameters will be compared against each other. So we can say tables dot users table dot and we can say username because this is a reference to our username. And then we can say username, which is our actual username variable. We can also say limit one since we know there's only ever going to be one and we can say dot get. So now we can do if user is not, then we throw an error and we are going to be giving it another object. And the status code is going to be 404 because despite what you may think, it doesn't always just mean the page is not found. It just generally means not found. 404 not found. So our user is not found. It's nice to provide errors that actually have a message. So you know the clarity that this API route does actually exist, but the user just couldn't be found. And now what we want to do is verify that our bcrypt hash matches the password that we provided here. This can be done by doing an if, and we're gonna say await compare, and then we provide the password that the user entered against the user's password, which should be hashed. Don't actually provide an object in the select here. Just make sure you give it a blank thing because otherwise it will infer a any type. You'll notice that it's complaining because it can't find the name compare. Simply add it up here to our import statement next to hash. Actually, we can just get rid of hash entirely. Okay. so. Now we're going to be checking if this is true, but actually we want to be checking if it's false. So I'm going to surround it in parentheses and add an exclamation mark at the front. So here we can throw a new error. Now we can give it a new object and say status code 401. This status code is called unauthorized. So if the password is invalid, you are, unauth you are unauthorized from using this user. We can say, invalid password or just maybe invalid login credentials if you don't want them to know the password is incorrect. Now at the very end here we have verified that the password matches the users so we can successfully return a success true. I'm not actually going to be returning the user because I don't want to. Later on we will be returning a JWT token which will allow our browser to hold a token that the server can identify as being logged in but right now we're just gonna say success true. Let's go back to Bruno here and make a new request. And this one is going to be called login. It's also gonna be a post and it's gonna be hitting the API at auth login. So let's create that. And here we can go to our data body. And honestly, we can just paste our data body from the register into here. 
Let's save and let's try and make the request. You'll notice that we get success true. What if we type in a completely different password, 21 for example? We'll get an error and it will say invalid password. Very, very nice. That's exactly the behavior we want. And now you know how to get authentication inside of our site. In the next video, we'll be going through actually letting the browser authorize itself and making requests as the user on the browser side or the front end. But for right now, this is how you integrate authentication into your backend. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next one.